All right, what's going on guys? This video is gonna be a little bit different from my usual content. I was out camping this weekend. I had my Overland Trader with me, it was all set up. So I figured I'd give you guys kind of a walkthrough of how it's laid out, some of the components, and how I built this thing from scratch, basically from the ground up. Uh, if you're new to this channel, we create content full of useful tips, techniques, and or drills just like this one to help you build and or expand your tactical knowledge base. So consider subscribing. If you've been watching my videos for a while, it's a little bit different from my usual content, but I think it falls in line with the overall theme of this channel. If you're like me, we like shooting, we like the tactical aspect, but we also like being prepared. And that's what this video is all about, that outdoor survival slash preparedness aspect of our tactical knowledge base. It's not always just about shooting or tactics, sometimes it's just about survivability, and that's kind of what this falls in line with. So I'm gonna share with you kind of how I built this step-by-step uh, -step process Hopefully, it inspires you to maybe build your own overland trailer or at least moves you into that preparedness aspect of your survivability and tactical knowledge base. So, with that being said, stay tuned. All right, first let's talk about the overall kind of dimensions of the trailer. So it roughly weighs about 2,500 pounds. It's 12 and a half feet long by six feet wide. Same width as my Tacoma there. That's what I pull it with. I have 17 inch rims on it, which also match the ball pattern on the Tacoma. That way, if I have to change the spare from the trailer to the truck or vice versa, they're kind of interchangeable. So that's kind of the overall dimensions. Let's get into the actual specs and how I built it. All right, so first thing, of course, is gonna be the, the chassis or the frame. That's the first thing I built. It's got a two by two uh, reinforced beam uh, down the middle, and then I kind of built a rectangular shape around that. Uh, once I had that all square, that's probably the most important part because I make sure everything would line up later down the process of fabricating this thing. Once that was squared up, I built out into the fender area and then forward into where eventually the tongue box would sit. Uh, like I said, this is probably the most important part because I had to make sure that when I was building this, I could line out where all the components would eventually sit. And I had no diagram for this thing. So it was a lot of measuring, a lot of making sure that everything would fit once the final product was done. Uh, once that chassis frame was built, then it was just a matter of adding the suspension, which I'll show you here in a minute, and then building up. All right, so there's the suspension there. Uh, they bolt right onto the frame, so they're super easy to install, and they actually have better clearance than my Tacoma. They're Tiburon 3,500 pound uh, axle suspension. Uh, great product, highly recommended, and it rides super smooth through rough terrain. All right, so once that frame was built and that process, I actually built the fenders out too, had the suspension installed, then it was just a matter of building up. Uh, basically what I did was I took one by two square tubing and framed it out kind of like a cage where the doors would be, where all the components would sit. Once that was there, I welded that to the frame itself and then I just took sheet metal and kind of lined the whole thing, cut it out and I riveted onto the cage that I built. I would definitely recommend a hydraulic rivet gun for that because there are hundreds and hundreds of rivets installed. Once I had it all framed out, all uh, sealed up, then I basically took uh, aluminum uh, angle iron and I siliconed and put, uh, put it where all the joints would be uh, and then it was ready for paint. At that point, uh, primed it, painted it, and I was pretty much uh, set at that point. Just a matter of building the rack. I went a little bit higher, of course, uh, built the rack where the tent would eventually sit and then I was at that point, pretty much 90% uh, there. Now it's just a matter of installing the components and the electrical stuff. Well, I'll give you a walkthrough here in a minute. All right, so let's start off here with the tongue box. This is just an aluminum tongue box bolted to the frame. This is where the brains of everything is, right? I got some deep cycle batteries in here and then the wiring goes through the tongue box, under the chassis, and then into the main compartment. On this driver's side here, I got two uh, doors. This first door here, it's kind of just a, a pull through here is where I keep my cooler. Uh, I got, of course, you'll see the water tank here, but all that electrical that comes from the tongue box runs into this box here. Uh, opening up this side here, this is kind of my kitchen area. Here's where the brains of everything's at right now. So I got my water pump, I got interior cabin lights, I got exterior spotlights, and then I got uh, lights that illuminate the floor beneath me. I'll show you guys a video of that tonight once I turn up on the lights here. Uh, Moving on down, right, this is my kitchen area here, so I use this kind of my prep area. I'll put stuff on here. I can prep some food on here, and I got a little pull-out that I put on here with my camp stove. 
super easy to use. All my uh, pots and pans are up here. All I do is I take this uh, propane tank that's kind of attached to the uh, uh, step here, and I just pull out my kitchen and hook it up, and I am good to go. Super fast, super efficient. All right, moving on to the back side here, of course. You can get a better view of the, come up close, get a better view of the framing or the rack that holds up the rooftop tent. Uh, and then let's get on back. So we got one big drawer in the, or door in the back. This one's just for storage, this is all I keep in here. Uh, I got these tubs, this one's got miscellaneous stuff like a Mr. Buddy heater, uh, extra clothing. My pantry sits in here and that's kind of what it looks like in there. Uh, moving along to the passenger side, I got some spare gas. Uh, my water intake is right here. So I basically connect the water hose into this and it fills up my water tank inside. And on this side here, I have a propane uh, tankless water heater. I have the hose in the tongue box connected here with a propane tank and basically have instant hot water. Uh, let's take a look in here real quick. All right, so let me show you guys the inside. So there's the, uh, the water pump. Basically, once I turn the switch on that little box there, it pressurizes the system and we're good to go. It's basically plumbed uh, through the roof there and then it breaks off in a T. On this side here, it goes to my water tank there. Uh, and then on the uh, driver's side there, it just goes to a water hose. Eventually, I'm gonna build a sink on that side. And then all the electrical as well runs across the top with the interior lights. Okay, a few more things to add uh, in regards to the build. First and foremost, make sure you're compliant with your state's DOT guidelines, Department of Transportation guidelines, when it comes to trailers. Things such as marker lights. You have to have front marker lights, rear marker lights, brake lights, turning lights, all, all that good stuff. So make sure you're compliant with that. As far as the miscellaneous parts when it comes to your gaskets, your latches, your hinges, propane tank, your LED lights, Amazon is your friend. I would simply just start ordering parts as I was progressing through the build, then they'd arrive and I'd simply incorporate them into the project. Uh, another noteworthy item was the fenders. I actually framed those out in steel, but I used aluminum diamond plate to kind of cover those up and the part I'm sitting on right now, just to cut down on the weight. And then the last thing I'll mention is the hitch. I actually use what's called a lock and roll hitch. Much better hitch than your standard ball hitch when it comes to off-road vehicles. First of all, it actually locks in place so it can't disconnect. And then number two, it articulates both up and down and left and right. That coupled with the independent suspension allows for a really smooth ride and I can actually negotiate some pretty rough terrain and not worry about it disconnecting or disengaging like your standard ball hitch would. Of course, they're a little bit more expensive than your standard ball hitch, but definitely worth the investment. All right, so that is a trailer build there. It took me about six to eight months to complete, mainly on the weekends or in the afternoons. Uh, I am not a master welder or a master fabricator. I simply bought one of those Lincoln portable welders, made a few projects, and then jumped right into this. So I am 100% self-taught when it comes to this. So if you have the slightest technical ability, you should have no problems building something similar. If you have any questions or comments or want specs on some of the dimensions or some of the components that I use for this build, do not hesitate to leave me a comment down below as I'll be more than willing to share that information with you. As always, if you found this information valuable, leave me a comment down below. Consider subscribing to catch my latest videos. With that, stay safe and train hard.